Hello and good afternoon and welcome once again to TexMac Direct, Happy Embroidery Machines. And we're here with our frequent broadcasts here to talk about and answer some of the major questions you all might have in considering adding to your business or starting up a business with Happy Embroidery Machines. So we go on and on about the differences between the machines, their strengths, um, sometimes their technical details and what they can do. But really for you as a business, <clears throat> the ultimate questions that you may be asking as uh, from a business standpoint is what can I achieve in terms of profitability? And so what we have today is a live example of a real job done by a happy uh, embroidery machine owner uh, that uh, runs a business. And she's agreed to share with us uh, this one example here that uh, will give us a, an idea. And it actually uses some real pricing from a real vendor um, and also uh, real costing from a real vendor. And then also we'll actually get to see the, uh, the pricing that uh, uh, she offered to the customer, which they've accepted. So since this is mid job, there'll be a follow up and we'll see some of the realities of this, but um, let's, um, uh, so as we do this, uh, I know you have questions, so uh, feel free. We're live here on Facebook. Type in your questions. Uh, I know that you've got them. I've got them. I always wonder what you can make from these machines. So this is a really, really interesting uh, mini deep dive into uh, what she's done to sell, um, where the rooms are, where the room is that she has uh, to make profit, and uh, also to. Um, also to offer fairer pricing to our customer. So without further ado, um, what I'm gonna do is I'll just go ahead and add, um, show um, some examples here. And um, so this is embroidery job costing and pricing, again, based on a real world example. So um, one thing I do wanna shoot out there is a universal disclaimer is that the price, even though there's some real prices here and uh, you're welcome to ask questions about that, um, what you're going to see throughout this is that she made decisions um, on pricing based on her situation. And what we're going to highlight here are going to be different stages throughout the uh, customer job order where you can make your own decisions and build your own uh, level of expectation for profit, return on investment, and also work in there too. Uh, uh, the ability to give what you feel is fair pricing. So uh, that's an, uh, something that we want you to be able to see if we go through this. So let's go ahead and go on to uh, the uh, to look at uh, this actual job. So first of all, uh, the customer uh, is a is a small restaurant called the Maya Grill. Uh, it's a, a restaurant somewhere in Western North Carolina about, with one of our customers, and. Um, just as, so you can kind of see the cutesy logo that they're sewing out. First of all, um, you'll see that they've ordered some staff shirts for the, the wait staff, um, several shirts per person. They've uh, ordered some shirts for the, uh, the management. So they all have a, want to have a, a unified look. And they've also ordered some aprons. So um, some of the realities of embroidery will, will stick out here and I want to highlight them first. I want to show you the piece that she shared with us um, that uh, that um, she embroidered. So I think this is a really nice looking logo for Maya Grill. It's 22,000 stitches, it's pretty big. Um, this, uh, they, they really thought about putting this uh, as a left chest here. Uh, with 22,000 stitches, if you're a new embroiderer, I'll tell you right now, that's pretty heavy for um, a, uh, uh, a light shirt, especially as we go into summertime. So uh, initially they had ordered this for all of their shirts. And so 30 shirts with this, uh, 22,000 stitches, that's a lot of embroidery. And, and that you can thank dollar signs for having your embroidery machine, machine make money. But as she negotiated with the customer, she, uh, they discovered a different reality that's really made sense. And this is something you want to think about as you're making presentations to your customer. So uh, 22,000 stitch logo. And as you can imagine, keep in mind as you're running your machine, no matter what brand you have, it takes time to run these. So this logo runs on this machine. I tested it. This takes exactly 30 minutes to run for 22,000 stitches, which is really not bad. You're very close to 800, 800 stitches a minute nonstop. The machine will produce that easily with this Voyager 
even faster with our bigger single uh, single head machines. So that's really a pretty good pace to produce these. But the other reality is that um, they also want to have the monogram. The other thing they wanted to do on the shirts is have names. So this is an a example of one of the names. They have an employee named Chris. So you can imagine uh, sewing Chris is going to take a lot less time than sewing the actual logo to Maya Grill. So let's talk about what they did. Um, let me go ahead and skip through to um, they've got shirts and aprons. So let's go ahead and look at the uh, what they wound up doing. So um, and then I'll pause. Remember, if you come up with questions, I can back up. We'd love to answer your questions about this because, again, we have a, um, a live example. So we can actually go through some of um, really where some of the sources are. That way you can really feel like you can actually see some of these prices out there or something very similar. So um, here we're looking at their pricing strategy. And when you start up your embroidery business, um, and you really register as a business with your uh, with your local municipality, with the county, uh, the next thing you'll do is get your federal tax ID. You may know this already, but for th those of you who are thinking about getting into business, um, you apply uh, for, to the, for the Department of Revenue uh, for a federal tax ID. And that federal tax ID means, means that you now have an entity registered with the US government to do business so that they can track what you do for tax purposes. And once you do that, that clears the way for you to open accounts with wholesalers. And what you're seeing on screen now is one of those wholesalers. And uh, when you open an account, you don't, uh, with all, a lot of them, you don't even have to buy a minimum. You can buy one if you want to, one piece, or you can buy a dozen. So uh, what you're looking at here are actual prices um, on the cost column. Uh, these are golf shirts. Um, if you're curious, I can share the actual style number. But the, the price for these uh, cotton piquet golf shirts is five, or the cost is five dollars and seventy eight cents. And the re uh, and the wholesaler also share the retail price. That um, which is a great thing because it provides a guideline for everybody buying from there about what that goes for. Um, and one thing to note is that your customers who are buying embroidery are savvy. They may you may sell them a shirt. And they may, they're smart enough to look up the style number of the shirt that they have or whatever it is, and they'll Google it and look at what the retail pricing is. So having this kind of information from your supplier, what the uh, MSRP is, gives you a baseline to charge. And then now when you subtract your price from your cost, you have an idea how much you're making per garment uh, so that you can buy in quantity. It also gives you other flexibilities, but ba this is your baseline for profitability. And this is you just selling buying an A and selling it A plus B. And that's all this page is. So um, you're looking for 45 pieces. You're charging a total of $485.92. So uh, roughly 10, 11 bucks a piece. Now that's not counting the embroidery, but this is your baseline before you start getting into uh, to, uh, to actually adding your embroidery fees. Because some uh, embroidery fees you can imagine, and you'll see uh, very shortly is that um, you may not make that much money off of this. So uh, the markup in the garment to be able to provide it to guarantee that it's an excellent and light, new quality is something that is um, that is uh, a cost that you are able to absorb uh, with that profit margin. We've got a couple of we've got a couple of uh, comments here. So um, so Jasmine says uh, hi. I'm here and uh, also. Uh, Crystal, um, also welcome. So ladies, welcome. I know if I can see more people that are here uh, looking at some of these numbers. And uh, again, this will be recorded so that you all can see this. All right, now let's look at the next page. And again, this is going to be uh, talking about the realities of, of adding the embroidery to that. So we'll go ahead and uh, um, scroll to the next page and let's take a look at that. So with embroidery, we have the same uh, numbers and I I didn't know if I meant to share this, but I'm glad it's here is you can actually see the style number and you can Google these. Um, and these are some these are some common names out there. I think Gildan's one of them uh, and there are a couple of others. Uh, Jonathan Corey is another uh, provider. Uh, I believe that's what the 622 is, uh, but uh, 
but um, you have the identifier. But what we're looking at here is stitch count. They um, they estimated for names on average. It's going to be anywhere from Chris, which is uh, this one up being about 600 stitches to you know about 1,500 stitches for some of the longer names. So uh, ballparking this, um, you're about a, a thousand stitch count for, for each. And so it's going to take maybe a little over a minute. So we average about two minutes. Um, we'll show you that in the production information. Uh, but you can see that the price, uh, looking at the first thing is the staff shirts at $9.84. We've added a $2 embroidery fee and averaged it. Um, and what she had done is just simplify the price to $12. That's something you can do. Uh, again, this is your discretion as you're building your pricing matrix and strategies. She just rounded to the nearest dollar. Um, uh, one of the things that she shared is that she likes to keep things simple where she can. Um, that really uh, that really helps when the, the difference doesn't really make much of a difference. The simplicity sometimes helps um, uh, the customer understand the different aspects of the order. So, um, so what you're seeing here is she's adding a small amount of uh, of money to uh, charge for doing something very simple. And then you'll see on the aprons where she does the full on logo, she's looking at 11 to $12 for this 22,000 stitch design. Now you may be thinking, you may have heard standard pricing at a dollar per thousand. So she could have gone 22,000 or $22 for the embroidery. Uh, but this is also a logo that she's done uh, for a few aprons before. So th there's no, the digitizing fee has already been absorbed. So that's one thing you wanna take into account is that when you set up a job in all of this uh, uh, setup, you may wanna add a one-time fee. And then at, over time um, or over the course of several orders, in this case, you can see they ordered 10 aprons. So uh, with one apron or two aprons, uh, it, the 15 to $20-ish digitizing fee for that um, that you can definitely feel that. But if you they're ordering 10, then you can scale that uh, digitizing fee down to the point that really she really didn't add that in. And in fact, she's charging about 50 cents per, per thousand. And so uh, we'll talk about that in a moment. But uh, the important thing is that you do want your embroidery fee at some point to reflect uh, how much time that uh, you're on, that this is on the machine. So um, at $11, and if it takes uh, 30 minutes to run these, then um, then it, you can do two an hour. So the embroidery machine is making $22 uh, per hour of just sewing this. Um, and then on top of that, that doesn't count the margin that you have with the garments. And also uh, $2 each for, uh, for the shirt takes two minutes. You are uh, Then you're really looking at uh, getting 30 of these done in an hour, so all 30, so one hour. So you're looking at um, 42 plus, so $69 in the course of an hour. So this simpler, faster job uh, with a simple cost uh, pricing of $2 fee, um, she's making up for it. So you can see there's profit built in, um, whereas um, a logo that's been tested and run and, and trouble free. And of course, when you're using a happy embroidery machine, where um, you have a nice running clean, fast, trouble free, then you have that flexibility to um, to to um, in the pricing uh, to uh, so that you have that for your customer, and that gives you the ability to keep your pricing um, in reasonable expectations. Or if you have competition, it gives you some room to uh, to to still stay competitive while still offering competitive pricing. Your uh, competitive and profitable um, at the same time. All right, so Ginger, uh, the uh, you, she does have a good comment. I, I do my own digitizing and don't charge, so you own it, which is great. So, um, and Ginger, you bring up a really good point. Um, if your customer orders uh, um, some work from you and you have it digitized, there's plenty of legal precedent that they don't own the, um, your customer doesn't own the design, even though you may charge for it as a line item, um, which hasn't been done in this job, um, but you still own the rights to that. And then uh, one of the court precedents, um, you can look this up in Impressions and Stitches Magazine um, from the past issues, is the, they cited a court case where, uh, if in the case where somebody's buying an end product like a pickup truck. So 
when you buy the pickup truck, just like buying an end product, an embroidered item, it doesn't automatically entitle you to the electronic plans or the digital file for the cutting machines to cut out the doors and the panels and the engines. So there's a lot of legal structure protecting you um, that even further protects you so that your customer can't demand even if you paid for the digitizing and even more so if you do want to take on your own digitizing. And I will say something here, um, more power to Ginger and anybody else who, re who wants to do your own digitizing. In this case, she has her own digitizer. She had done this uh, on site, so she had no cost. And um, she's not a finger broider. In fact, she's not busy all the time. Uh, so she may have a day or two in a week where she's not sewing. So she does have some flexibility to do some digitizing. And that's excellent. So um, now that'll be another discussion that uh, we'll have later, which is the quandary of bringing your own digitizing in uh, versus uh, outsourcing it. That's, a, that's also a huge question out there. So Ginger has got an excellent example where that works. Uh, this customer has an excellent example where this works. Um, so there's definitely an argument for it. All right, so excellent question uh, and comment, Ginger. So uh, let's move on. So. Basically, what you see is number one is that as big or as small as the embroidery job is, make sure that you are pricing accordingly for your machine time. All right. And then you can see she's added this in here uh, to the cost. So what you're looking at is that the customer uh, or uh, the embroiderer is charging retail plus a nominal fee for uh, the embroidery so that that makes sense. If they Google and look at these style numbers or they happen to, there's actually a larger um, uh, world out there where these items can be found. There's a reasonable MSRP they can find and they can see the value added by having a couple bucks uh, added for, uh, for that monogram. And now I know some of you guys out there, um, this uh, commercial or a multi uh, uh, volume structure where what they're doing is asking for the same shirt, putting it in the same place and there's an automation in software where you can actually have it uh, uh, all pretty much automatically go to each name for each shirt. And that really saves you a lot of time because uh, I know that monogramming, you often charge more for a one piece, like a monogram on a sweater that can be uh, presented as a present. In such a case, you're not looking at economies of scale. You're setting that sweater up differently from the one, what, whatever job you did before it, and you're gonna change the setup immediately after. When you are looking at 30 staff shirts, like you can see here, then you can really just um, be profitable by charging just the machine time, because you're only doing one setup, one design called team names, like Wilcom calls it, uh, or basically name drop, where the machine will just, will just rapid fire different names every time you change the shirt, the next name, um, the next name automatically sews. So you really are still able to be very profitable as we can just, we just showed. So again, that's team names that makes things uh, really, uh, that makes things uh, really easy to do. Okay, um, let's go on and let's talk about profitability. So um, now you can see where you can see the same, um, thing, but and you're looking at um, the profit per piece and then um, and then also the runtime. And actually, so for example, for 30 shirts, um, you're looking at, or 35 shirts, then you're looking at a, a total runtime all the way on the left, on the right of 70 minutes. And then um, your profit is going to be about $300 divided by 70 minutes. And you're, you know, that's really interesting that, um, you're really, you're almost at $200 an hour, uh, but all, but that's offsetting the fact that we have 10 aprons that took 30 minutes or six hours of runtime, and uh, the total profit on that's about 120. So you divide all that up, um, at, or actually five hours of runtime. Uh, so total um, runtime is six hours uh, based on their the testing and actually sewing this out, and then, um, over that time, you're making $415 uh, based on this pricing model. And divide that out, you wind up um, getting about $67 per hour, which is re really not a bad uh, profit margin. And um, I do want to share in here, I know some of you maybe uh, have questions about what, are, what about the other stuff? It's like 
you're seeing really the costing in here that's only factored is is the garment itself. And in truth, the majority cost of an embroidery business is not the machine payment. That's actually very small compared to uh, what you're going to pay for the garment. And you don't think about that because obviously you're going to buy the garments, turn around, mark them up, and then sell them and turn them so that there's a very short time between the time you actually buy the garment, uh, buy the, the uh, pieces for the job, and then deliver it and then get your invoice back from your customer. Or some people will do in good business practices is that um, they may even um, require a 50% deposit up front, which will cover your upfront costs, uh, non-refundable. That way you can go to, go to work. The customer's got some buy-in to the job so that they won't walk away. Uh, but either way, you don't see that, that huge footprint of the majority cost, which is your garment. But one other thing that we built into this, if you actually look at your, um, the, the costing is that, um, that was calculated in here, that she said that per piece, she just threw in a $1 uh, uh, additional fee for other things that are involved, thread and stabilizer, and the, the, the other material costs. And thread winds up being about eight cents per thousand. So in a thousand stitch design, you're looking at eight cents. And then backing anywhere from 20 cents to 50 cents uh, up to a dollar or so, it kind of averages out. And that way she's building some cost in, for example, the Maya Grill uh, logo uh, that you're seeing here, uh, for example, um, that at, uh, at eight cents per thousand. So eight times 22, you're looking at $1.60, $1.70 cost. And then uh, for one piece of cutaway backing, uh, which is about 15 cents per piece. So it averages out. So between um, slightly under a dollar for the shirts and costs to a little over um, just under $2 for these, um, the dollar actually kind of covers itself pretty nicely per piece. So, um, but really um, in your profitability, um, in, in terms of sheer material, you're really subtracting out uh, from your uh, total uh, charge to the customer is the garment price and some nominal price for materials, you know, roughly on the magnitude of a dollar per piece. So, uh, and you can see you have that, you have some room there where it says $67 uh, profit per hour. So let's talk about that. And again, you guys were live. If you have any questions, uh, we're glad to have them. And also if you catch this later, you're welcome to ask questions. We will continue to answer them as we go. So let me, um, move on and let's look at some of the conclusions here. So, and like I'd said, there's overall flexibility in the costing and pricing. So you can um, set margins in case you're in a market where uh, you really need higher profit margins because you may want to add labor in. So you're making $64 an hour and you may not pocket all of that. Maybe if you're making $64 an hour, then if you run for 10 hours, you're making 600 bucks and that could be a space payment rent. So, if, um, so, and it, so you can easily calculate that if you're running more than 10 hours in a month, then you're easily paying rent, um, salary, you know, run two days like that. And you're already paying rent utilities and everything like that, but there's room and flexibility to build that in. And, uh, so, and looking at that, um, you can build more profitability. Number one, the pricing, um, uh, she had said is she's been a little bit conservative. Um, she went straight retail and some markets can bear higher prices. And also she, uh, there's a point is that with this supplier and several others, she went straight by catalog pricing and the catalog pricing does, um, the pricing did reflect that she bought those 30 shirts um, by case pricing, which is 24 pieces per case. So the cost was uh, in the lowest in their matrix, but you can always for large orders, uh, with most of these suppliers, call them directly, and they do have a direct rep that may uh, be able to talk to you about uh, where they can move a little bit, especially with large jobs, because you're saving them by uh, your supplier by uh, taking uh, buying in bulk, and uh, a lot of them will uh, work with you on giving you better margins. So, and then I want to point one other thing out is that if you um, and uh, let me go ahead and put that up there. So just to you can see, again, you can build more profitability in a job um, by uh, moving your pricing a little bit. 
and also that you can um, and then also that you can negotiate often with your supplier on some margins to uh, to help that as well. Uh, but one thing I want to point out here is this gets a lot more interesting. So with a single head embroidery machine, you're looking at the numbers can, it can make. The Voyager 12 needle is great, compact commercial machine, happy machines are commercial, meant, meant to run and give you repeatable business like this. Um, but it gets a lot more interesting if you have more than one sewing machine, one more one more than one embroidery head, because it takes the same amount of labor to run two machines as it does to run one. So where we were looking at six hours runtime um, with two machines, you're at three hours runtime. So instead of $67 per hour in theory, then you're looking at $134 per hour in profitability. Now often, you know, we're talking income that like doctors make, you know, and things like that. And you wonder, can I be, and you can shoot for the star, stars set again. Disclaimer is really set up your pricing structure and your costing structure to match your needs and your costs. Um, and you can see how you can scale uh, that up that way. The other way that you can do this with uh, a second uh, head or the multi heads that the happy uh, Japan uh, embroidery machines have are the, uh, that can do several at a time. Uh, the multi heads make it easy to do them in a batch. Um, is that you can offer even more competitive pricing. So instead of a dollar per thousand or 50 cents per thousand, um, as you saw here, you can go down to a quarter per thousand and still be profitable because your labor doesn't go up. So this is where there's a lot of room in this example for you to make your own judgments. And of course, your profitability depends on uh, these things working. Have a reliable machine, learn to run it, um, uh, learn to, to run it, um, uh, from our classes so that it runs reliably for you and delivers for you that quality that will keep your customers coming back. Also, um, this will also, uh, um, um, because of the longevity, uh, let you plan in the long term for profits. And then finally, there's room for, to, for you to move for your customers. Um, you can see that you can go down a little bit if, if you want to. You're still making, you know, I would be happy with $40 an hour. You know, you can really, you have some room uh, or, but where the most important thing is where you're happy at, what uh, numbers, uh, the numbers mean to you. So real world uh, costing from a supplier, real world pricing. And this is how one of our uh, customers, happy machine owners was able to deliver on that. And again, the factor that, uh, that, relates to us, TexMac Direct, is that you have a machine that you can trust to deliver this kind of quality and production day after day, week after week, year after year, so that when they come back in order a few years later, or hopefully in another year, that you're delivering exactly the same quality. You have that predictable runtime because you have a quality machine made from Japan, Happy Japan Embroidery Machine. So um, looks like uh, you guys have, uh, we've had a great audience here. And I know this is quite a bit to digest. We've got quite a few listeners here, so we appreciate y'all. Um, I'll pause here to see if y'all have any questions. Again, this is um, real world job costing, um, doing a typical uh, logo for a customer and a combination of different placements. This was on the center of the aprons, and then this one up being on the left chest of the shirt. So, um, and it, because it's produced by a quality, Happy embroidery machine. This takes 30 minutes on this machine. This actually really, really, um, you can really trust that number. Wasn't even running full out. I think I got 850, 900 stitches a minute, um, even faster with the other happy embroidery machines, the, the bigger ones. Um, and this uh, this can, can be the uh, cornerstone for your profitability, so. Okay, so. Eric says, hello, and we've got a lot of visitors. Hello, Eric. So I know Eric's been doing this for a long time with his 12 needle machine. Um, we really appreciate you guys uh, stopping by to check us out. And again, this will be uh, recorded and saved on our Facebook and YouTube page uh, so that you can look at this hopefully and see uh, it can be a guideline uh, while you set up your own pricing, your own structures, which will vary with your situation. So hopefully this answers a lot of questions and uh, look to see you guys in the future. We appreciate your time. Check us out on Thursdays at 2 p.m. Eastern time for 
educational uh, videos and Facebook Lives on happy embroidery machines and running a profitable embroidery business. Thank you.